North American history is filled with a plethora of equal parts intrigue and tragedy. Tales that are plenty to come by, ones that teeter their way from myth and legend up to a much more contemporary understanding of the stark reality of the colonial era. Historical moments of murder and misfortune that have woven their way into the very canon of North American culture. The fact of the matter remains, North America is a place like no other, a land built upon an ancient mystery where a brave new world was forged from the fires of something long forgotten. In part 1 we managed to cover some pretty interesting tales but believe me there's plenty more where that came from. Hello horror fans what's going on and once again welcome back to the scary channel on YouTube, top 5 scary videos. As per usual I'll be your horror host Jack Finch as today we curiously take a look at the top 5 creepiest tales from North American history, part 2. Roll the clip. Right. Curious amongst you, that clip was from 1999's Ravenous, starring Guy Pearce and Robert Carlyle in some cannibalistic Civil War cult horror action. It's a fantastic film, and if you're in the mood for seeing some fear inducing fictional North American period horror, then that's definitely the film for you. And also, as a bonus, it sets the scene for our top five list pretty perfectly, doesn't it? And on that note, Let's begin. Kicking off at number 5, The Birdcage Theatre. And if you're particularly interested in the breakneck history of the Wild West, then this place may already sound a little familiar to you. Tombstone, Arizona, the last boom town of the American frontier, it's an important place enough and it appears that all of the bloodthirsty moments of violence and murderous revenge all seem to happen in one location. The Bird Cage Theatre originally opened on December 26, 1881 by owners Lottie and Billy Hutchinson with the intention of being a respectable variety show theatre for the equally respectable inhabitants of Tombstone, Arizona. If you know anything about the history of Tombstone though, respectable didn't exactly meet their aspirations and Billy and Lottie quickly began to cater for a different kind of crowd entirely. It is said that between 1881 and 1889, 26 murders were documented as taking place at the birdcage, mainly for its reputation as being a melting pot meeting point for every criminal and gunslinger in the Wild West. In fact, the longest poker game in history was played in the basement of the birdcage theatre, which still holds the record to this day. Anyone who entered the table had to pay a thousand dollars up front, which was a small fortune back in the day. And notable players included Bat Masterson, Diamond Jim Brady, Adolphus Bush, Doc Holliday, and the legendary Wire Earp. The poker game itself ran for the entire duration that the Birdcage Theatre was open, operating 24 hours a day, 7 days a week for a total of 8 years. It is believed that over 10 million US dollars were exchanged in the game for its duration, which is insane when you think about it. Regardless though, with as much intrigue and cold hard cash pouring into the place, people obviously clamoured for a slice of that pie and the Birdcage was the site of countless bloodthirsty altercations and still to this day, the souls of many unfortunate frontiersmen and women are said to roam its ruins. Also, if if you haven't seen Tombstone starring Val Kilmer and Kurt Russell, stop what you're doing right now and go and watch it. Coming in at number 4, The Horse You Came In On, which come on is an awesome name for a bar, right? Sadly for us though, its original name was far less mysterious. But it's also the second place of intrigue on our list that just so happens to serve booze. And for this particular establishment, there is one infamous ghostly figure that may be inexplicably tied to its history. Quoth the raven nevermore, our man Edgar Allan Poe. Built in 1795 in Baltimore, Maryland and founded as a saloon under a completely different name, the bar was built next to the docks and served as a drinking hole for the sailors, shipbuilders and other such miscreants that populated 18th century Baltimore. Obviously this combination was a winning one and the saloon soon garnered the attention of a much more haunted kind of clientele, none other than Edgar Allan Poe. You see, as the legend tells it, this bar was the last bar that Poe would pass on his way home. And you know, given the kind of musings that he was frequent to, it often required a few liquid libations to spur on the inspiration of some of the finest works of gothic horror literature ever written. In fact, Poe became such a frequent visitor to the saloon that is widely considered to be the last place that he was seen before his mysterious death in 1849. As the legend goes, the saloon was the last place he drank before being found on the night of October 3rd, 1849, deliriously wandering the streets of Baltimore, rambling about horrors unseen. He died four days later, the cause of his death is still a mystery to this day. And some say that after leaving the bar, he was found wearing clothes that weren't his own, repeatedly calling out the name Reynolds. Some sources say that Poe's last word 
words were, Lord, help my poor soul. But all medical records have since been lost, including his death certificate. Whatever the truth is, it is said that the bartenders often leave out a glass of cognac after last call at the horse you came in on, the drink of choice for Poe. And as they say it, every morning, they find the glass empty. Next up at number 3, The Legend of the Death Tree. For all intents and purposes, Villa, Missouri is very much a ghost town. First built in 1868, the town itself has been the site of some particularly strange moments throughout history. But now, with a population of just 125, the place has been in decline ever since the late 70s. Despite that though, its particularly dark past has managed to cling on to one of its most fearsome legends. That of the Death Tree and the malevolent spirit of Rotten John. Reb. You see, due to its positioning as a border state, like most places in Missouri, the town of Avila found itself split during the Civil War, with both halves falling on either side of the conflict. Because of that, Avila was the site of some rather grisly encounters, and as the legend goes, during the war, the skull of a Confederate bushwhacker was found out in the woods that bordered the town, the grim remains of one particularly bloody battle. However, instead of burying the skull, the locals hung it from a tree as a warning sign to other bushwhackers to stay put in the wilderness and not spill out their conflict toward their town. Well, obviously, this action had the complete opposite effect, and the legend of Rotten Johnny Reb was born. Ever since his skull was hung on the death tree, his spirit roamed the town, searching for unionists to murder in revenge for mocking him. Over the years, many deaths were contributed to the existence of Rotten Johnny Reb, and as his supernatural power grew, the vast majority of the remaining townspeople quickly fled a villa, terrified by the tales of the Phantom bushwhacker. According to the old legend, the only way to ultimately end the curse and finally put Rotten Johnny's spirit to rest is to find his skull out in the wild, cut it down from the tree, and bury it in holy ground. However, those that knew where the death tree resided have long since passed, and so the true knowledge of its location has faded from memory. As the locals tell it, there was once a belief that black crows would flock to the death tree during the day and perch upon its twisted branches. Some say that it was an apple tree that no longer bears fruit, and if you ever find an apple out in the woods, you'll find another nearby, leading you to its ghostly realm. Swinging in at number 2, The Axeman of New Orleans. And really, we can't talk about creepy North American history without addressing one of its most bloodthirsty mysteries, The Axeman of New Orleans, a murderous killing spree that reigned from May 1918 to October 1919, taking the lives of six innocent people and grievously injuring six more. And that may also have started much earlier in 1911, but that's anyone's guess. You see, despite the very public panic and revelation of his crimes, The Axeman was never identified, and the murders remain unsolved to this very day, and more than likely, they will never be solved. As the name suggests, the Axeman's modus operandi was to murder with an axe, which strangely enough, often belonged to the victims themselves. In most cases, the scene of the crime was relatively similar, where a panel on the back door of a home was removed with a chisel, where the Axeman then entered covertly. Even stranger still, none of these crimes were motivated by robbery, and the Axeman never saw fit to steal from his many victims. which begs the question why? You see, whilst the notorious H.H. H. Holmes is widely considered to be America's first serial killer, the Axeman of New Orleans is considered to be the first and most outwardly public, toying with the Louisiana police during his campaign of terror. The vast majority of the Axeman's victims were Italian immigrants or Italian Americans, leading many to believe that his crimes were ethnically motivated. Whilst many media outlets sensationalized many aspects of his crimes, given the fact that there was next to nothing to go on, the leading theory was that the Axeman was operating on behalf of the Mafia, despite lack of any evidence whatsoever. The strangest instance of the Axeman came on March 13th, 1919, where a letter to local newspapers was sent by the Axeman, stating that he would kill again at 15 minutes past midnight, but would instead spare any homeowners that were playing jazz music. That very night, every single dance hall in New Orleans was filled to capacity, and bands of all calibers played jazz at hundreds of houses and private parties across the city. There were no murders that night, and that was the last correspondence of the Axeman of New Orleans. His bloodthirsty mystery forever 
unsolved. And finally, coming in at number one spot, the Brown Mountain Lights. Which is an intriguing name nonetheless, but the truth of the matter remains, there is perhaps no other such source of North American mystery than the Brown Mountain Lights. A potentially paranormal phenomena with so many differing explanations that it's anyone's guess where on earth this legend first started. The lights themselves are a series of ghost lights that emerge near Brown Mountain in North Carolina that reportedly on any clear evening can be seen for miles across the mountain overlook. Now, although there are countless instances of strange lights that emerge all across North America, the Brown Mountain lights seem to stand out as the most consistently sourced and verified. The earliest verified accounts date all the way back to September 24th, 1913, where a fisherman reported to the Charlotte Daily Observer that he had seen mysterious lights just above the horizon every single night. First dismissed as a trick of the horizon, the site became the study of the US Geological Survey, who gave credit to the witnesses' claims in 1922 by dismissing the possibility that the lights were in fact passing trains following the events of a flood that destroyed the electrical grid and the lights continued to appear during the study. Throughout history, there have been countless potential origins of the Brown Mountain lights, many of which are wrapped up in tragic tales of lost lovers or wandering woodsmen. However, the oldest and perhaps most profound explanation dates all the way back to the year 1200, where the legend goes that the Cherokee and Catawba nations engaged in a vicious battle upon the ridge of what is now known as Brown Mountain. There, so much blood was shed by either side that even the bodies of their most mighty warriors were lost beneath the soil. That night, after the fight had ended and the blood spilt, the women of both tribes lit torches and they scoured the ridge for the bodies of their fallen loved ones. It is said that night after night they would light their torches again in search of their lovers' bodies, never to be found. Local legend says that this mournful scene was so tragic and intense that it is forever imprinted into the historical fabric of the mountain, haunting it for eternity. Well, there we have it, horror fans. That list for the top five creepiest tales from North American history, part two. What do you guys think? Do you agree, disagree, have any more to add? Then let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below. As well as any choice picks of your own. Before we depart from today's video, though, let's first take a quick look at some of your more creative comments from over the past few days. First up, Warrior Princess says, Jack, you could joke a little more in your videos like the other hosts do. Make the top five videos a little more funnier. What? Are you kidding me? I'm busting my balls here trying to crack out some horror themed tongue in cheek Lovecraftian dad jokes. I know it's a niche genre, but come on, give me credit where it's due. I'm trying to be funny. The real Thanos says if I were a movie character, I would want Jack as my sidekick. All right, sounds good. Thanos is sidekick. Seems like a pretty dangerous occupational hazard though, so. Maybe we'll have to work a few things out, but yeah, I can see it going. Anyway, on that note, that's unfortunate we've got time for it in today's video. Just stick around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video or just top five scary videos in general, then please be a dear and hit that thumbs up button as well as that subscribe bell. And I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your horror host, Jack Finch. You've been watching top five scary videos. Until next time, you take it easy.